Okay, so let's start with this uh, final uh, session, which will be very short, because uh, imperatively we have to uh, end up at uh, uh, one o'clock. So um, let me uh, try to make a couple of remarks to uh, conclude this uh, uh, conference. First, I would like to congratulate uh, the organizers of uh, this conference. I mean, I think it was really uh, a great uh, conference. I would like to congratulate the speakers, uh, the panelists, uh, the audience, uh, because uh, uh, indeed, this has been a very productive uh, set of uh, presentations, discussion, some of them I was not there yesterday uh, at the end of the day. Uh, apparently, some of them quite uh, lively. Uh, and this is exactly what, uh, what, what we need. And uh, uh, as a general remark, I would like to say that uh, this is a kind of conference which is uh, fitting remarkably well what GDN is about. And uh, uh, we would like uh, all uh, GDN conferences to be like this one. Uh, and uh, uh, we would like this uh, uh, kind of conference to uh, um, generate more work uh, along the uh, line of GDN, which is essentially uh, research, uh, policy-oriented research. Uh, and uh, uh, this uh, conference has been uh, giving a lot of examples of successful uh, uh, research uh, in this direction, but it has also shown uh, many areas, many directions in which uh, more is to be done. So I will not intend to uh, summarize what has been said in uh, two and a half days. Uh, this is uh, uh, certainly not something that can be done in a few minutes. So what I would like to do is simply to insist on a few points which uh, uh, come out of uh, the discussion and the presentation and which I believe uh, uh, are worth uh, to, be, to be underscored. My first uh, uh, point, I mean, I will not say that tax, taxation is important and for many, many reasons. I think that we got uh, evidence of this uh, over the last two days. But my, my first point is about uh, the fact that this conference shows that there's been a change in the way in which taxation issues are being considered. And uh, in particular, it shows that the time of uh, dogmas about uh, taxation is gone. At some stage, taxation in development was the personal income tax. This goes back to the 60s, and there is a famous paper by Nicolas Caldor, which is exactly about this. And then, uh, uh, 10, 15 years later, when people realized that it was quite difficult to uh, do a lot with personal income tax in developing countries, then the shift was to value-added tax, the VAT. And there was a view, and as a matter of fact, it was uh, very prominently put by the IMF, that uh, uh, the only good tax was a VAT, which should be uniform and which should be to everybody. No more progressivity, uh, a uniform tax would, would, would do it. And uh, okay, I'm uh, uh, very happy to see that uh, this is not at all uh, what uh, uh, is being uh, discussed today, what has been discussed in this conference. And of course, uh, uh, we all agree that uh, the IMF has uh, changed uh, uh, its view uh, uh, over the recent years, I mean, over the last 15 years, 10 or 15 years. So I think it is quite important to have uh, this in mind because uh, uh, this shows that uh, we are uh, living the, the world of uh, principles or rules uh, which would be uh, applied to uh, all countries in the same way. A lot has been said about country specificity here. A lot has been said about the need for country ownership of uh, tax reforms. All this goes in the direction of uh, uh, having a tax mix which are uh, essentially uh, uh, dictated by the reality of a country. My second point would be on tax cum spending or uh, tax versus uh, spending. And uh, uh, from that point of view, I think there is no doubt that uh, uh, it is difficult to consider taxation independently from spending. But at the same time, there are many issues which are 
uh, technical issues to some extent which are uh, typical of taxes. I mean, tax collection <laughs> has nothing to do, of course, with the uh, way in which uh, the tax revenue will be spent. Uh, but yet, I think it is important to have in mind that uh, uh, some issues in taxation cannot be considered independently from uh, spending. We talked about redistribution. A part of the redistribution at the top may be done by your personal income tax. At the bottom, we need something else. Uh, we know that on the spending side, there are subsidies in many countries. What is the difference between changing subsidy uh, downward and increasing a tax. There is no difference. This is exactly the same thing. In terms of incentive, it is the same thing. Uh, in terms of revenue, how much is available for uh, uh, other things, it is the same thing. So, uh, to, uh, and uh, uh, it was very often uh, mentioned that uh, uh, what is done with the tax revenues is quite important to uh, facilitate or to increase the willingness to pay by uh, taxpayers. A third point, I have really to accelerate, is about transparency. Very, very uh, uh, important stress was uh, put on uh, the need for uh, transparency in terms of legitimacy of uh, the uh, tax system. Uh, but at the same time, I think that not only we want to know how much is being uh, collected, how much is being spent and well and how, but we also need more than that. We need to have a true evaluation of the impact of the taxation system. So it is not enough to say how much is being collected. It is necessary to have somewhere what is the incidence of taxation in uh, uh, the various uh, 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 parts of uh, uh, segments of the population. And uh, this may be something which is uh, not uh, well uh, developed uh, at uh, this uh, time. Uh, more uh, progress is to be made on this, uh, but I thought that it was uh, important to, to mention it. Uh, next point would be on the international uh, aspect of taxation in uh, developing countries. Uh, this is a very uh, difficult topic. This is a very timely topic in the sense that there is this uh, initiative by the OECD, by the G20, uh, which uh, is of uh, concern, of course, for developing countries uh, and uh, uh, certainly a better understanding of uh, what uh, all this implies for developing countries is uh, needed. And uh, I believe that this is uh, what uh, has been uh, uh, said um, uh, yesterday. Also, uh, the point made by uh, Vera on the fact that uh, there was a need for more participation of low-income countries or developing countries in general to the uh, discussion about uh, those uh, global uh, uh, issues or global rules was uh, essential. To end up, two uh, points. First, a lot has been said I think that uh, we could see that a lot of progress has been made in this area. Uh, and in many cases, very, very impressive work has been uh, shown. Uh, yet, uh, unfortunately, there is still much more, to some extent, to be done. And uh, uh, many questions were asked. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, uh, the participant to this uh, conference uh, will be uh, living Clermont with uh, uh, in mind uh, that uh, they will have to contribute in the future to answering many of the questions which uh, uh, have been uh, asked here. Uh, and uh, uh, on the progress to be made, one issue which has perhaps not been so much uh, uh, emphasized is the issue of the data. Uh, we need data to uh, analyze uh, the uh, impact or the incidence of taxation. Uh, in uh, developed countries, we are moving toward a systematic use of uh, tax administration data. They are made available to researchers. Uh, and a lot has been done with that uh, over the uh, recent past. Uh, in some countries, uh, those data have been made available. I have in mind, for example, the personal income tax. 
but it is not the case in uh, all countries. And the uh, personal income tax is only one area. Uh, another area would be corporate taxation, of course. And uh, even on uh, uh, um, indirect taxation, there is uh, something, some data that uh, could be uh, made available to researchers. And this is something that, uh, a message that we could uh, deliver to uh, tax administrations. So uh, I think that I have to stop because we are almost uh, uh, at uh, our time limit. Um, Okay, let me simply uh, conclude with uh, what I said at the beginning about uh, uh, GDN uh, and uh, this uh, conference. Uh, I think that this uh, conference has permitted uh, for uh, participants to make contacts, to discover what uh, was happening in other countries. A very interesting uh, aspect of this conference was all those... Uh, uh, sessions which were on specific parts of the world, on the uh, MENA, on uh, Asia, on Africa, uh, uh, and uh, they were attended by people who are not necessarily belonging to the same region. So uh, this really uh, is uh, one of the uh, mission of uh, GDN to make, to facilitate this kind of contact, and uh, I think it has been uh, quite successful during this conference, and we have to hope that this will continue after this conference, and the links have been created that will be uh, maintained, and that will be uh, facilitating the uh, um, exchanges uh, between uh, researchers uh, in uh, um, developing countries uh, in, in, in the future. Uh, so uh, I will uh, conclude on this. Uh, again, uh, congratulating uh, the organizer, and uh, Ramona is the main organizer of this uh, uh, conference. And uh, uh, with this, I will uh, stop and uh, I will leave the floor to Ramona. Thank you very much, Francois. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. Um, I'll pick up where you left off, in fact. I think this was um, in, indeed a very rich conference. There was a diversity of perspectives from across sectors, across regions, people from different types of organizations, from think tanks and uh, universities to uh, DFIs and civil society and private sector. And that really, I think, contributed to the exchange of knowledge and, and ideas here. Um, and we've pushed the frontier in some ways, and indeed also talked about uh, perhaps newer topics, environmental taxation, taxing, digital financial services, so on and so forth. We will, of course, make available all these PowerPoints and um, session recordings, so hopefully this can be tapped into down the road as well, and the dialogue does not stop here. For me personally, but I'm sure for a lot of you, it was really fabulous to be able to meet in person again <laughs> and also take advantage after the pandemic and take advantage of the networking opportunity. GDN is a global network, but take advantage of that networking opportunity, which happens during sessions and outside sessions. And um, I'm very, very happy that we could organize this in person. But of course, it had the hybrid dimension as well, which I think it allowed um, some of the speakers who could not be here in person to still contribute, um, as well as a much, much wider audience who could not travel for various reasons. And this is perhaps going to become the new normal, and I'm very happy that the technology gods and everything aligned and we were able to run that smoothly. Um, it was one of our main worries, I'll be honest about it. And... Um, let me come to the thank yous. I do have a list here. So Francois has thanked all of us very kindly. Um, I wanted to, sh to thank all of you in the audience. I think you've been extremely engaged. We ran over time because people were uh, asking questions and, and participating and um, shaping the debate. I want to thank the sponsors, without whom, of course, the conference would not be possible. Uh, the French Development Agency, the French Treasury, the Hewlett Foundation, so the main sponsors of the conference. The Scientific and the Organizing Committee. We started this 10 months ago, almost a year ago, and shaped every stage of the preparations, and the Scientific Committee and the Organizing Committees played a big role. We've had open calls for papers, for sessions, and 
you know, I think part of why perhaps the program was as good as it was is because um, we really sort of shaped it collectively. I want to thank the session organizers. You would have seen them in the program uh, identified for the different sessions they organized here. Uh, the Asian Development Bank, the European Commission, AFD, of course the local partners here, SERDI and FERDI, the Economic Research Forum in Egypt, IDRC, the World Bank, uh, JICA RI from Japan, UNU Wider, um, ICTD, the International Center for Tax on Development, the University of Toronto, and UNDP, and of course GDN. I hope I didn't forget anybody. But they also, uh, contributed to the richness of the program. They organized sessions and, and brought speakers uh, from across the world. And last but not least, the conference team at GDN, wherever you are, please um, take a bow. <laughs> it's really been a um, tremendous amount of work and I'm grateful to each and every one of you. A lot of um, time and sweat <laughs> Uh, and tears, perhaps, have been put into making this happen, but great teamwork, so thank you all very, very much. The student volunteers, you would have seen them around, and they've been fabulous. They're master students here at Serdi, and they also come from all over Africa, especially, but not only. And they've been with us for the last two and a half days, find, helping us find our way and <laughs> get to where we are supposed to be. So thank you very, very much. You've been fabulous. To the... Yes. <laughs> To the local partners, Serdi and Ferdi, and of course the university for hosting us. I will not name individuals within those organizations, but it's really been um, a collaborative effort and a co-hosted, co-designed, co-organized conference, and we are really grateful for that. It's been a labor of love, so I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. And uh, the good news that I want to leave you with is that this is an annual event. <laughs> so um, yes, we closed the curtain on this one, uh, but stay tuned. We hope to be able to announce very soon where our next conference will be and on what theme and on what topic, and hope that you will continue to engage, encourage colleagues to uh, respond to the call for papers and sessions and posters and participate and, and join us. Thank you very much. <laughs>